Hello and welcome to another episode of Modern Infrastructure Wednesday. I'm your host, Lee Zen. Super excited today to go over building a Kubernetes voting app on AKS, and especially because we'll be showing off one of the new features that we're announcing today in Pulumi, uh, which is cubed Pulumi. So today we're going to go through a couple things. We're going to create an AKS cluster. We're going to use cubed to Pulumi to actually convert a YAML uh, manifest to a modern programming language uh, example, and then we're going to deploy it and then actually do some quick, simple refactoring now that it's in a modern programming language, uh, all in a few minutes uh, here on Modern for Sure Wednesday. So if you haven't already, please make sure you subscribe uh, to the channel and also uh, make sure you uh, go ahead and like this video uh, after you watch it. Or go ahead and click that like button right now. Anyways, let's get started. Uh, we're going to start off with basically using this uh, this example uh, in, in the uh, Azure uh, Quick Starts. And we're going to be deploying this, this, this uh, example application. And so uh, this example application, I've already got this open in Visual Studio. I have this in this uh, this file, this YAML file, this manifest. I've already uh, copied it over, and you can also see I have a, I have a fairly simple Pulumi program here set up. Um, you know, just got the the standard things in my requirements. Uh, I'm using Python today, and um, it's also worth noting I have this cluster set up. This is more or less copied and pasted uh, out of this uh, in the Pulumi examples repo. Just you know how to set up a AKS cluster. Uh, using Python, this is more or less exactly copy and paste. Um, changed a few names, but otherwise not a huge lot of differences there. So I've already deployed that. And now the question is like, okay, I could, you know, use something to deploy this YAML, which I don't know if I, know if I really want to do that, right? Like this is this is not that, that great to work with, you know, from a maintaining perspective going forward. So can we actually, you know, I could also rewrite this by hand um, into, you know, Python, uh, if I'd like, or I can use uh, cube to Pulumi. So uh, I've already installed this. I'm just going to show you, you can you can brew install uh, cube to Pulumi, super easy, uh, not a whole lot to do there since it's already installed. And then we're going to run uh, cube to, uh, oops, I'm going to run uh, cube to Pulumi. Uh, we're going to ask to convert to Python. And we're going to give it this uh, manifest file. And boom, just like that, it's all done. And now we actually have the, the exact same uh, code, but in Python, which is very nice. And uh, I can actually just import my cluster and use that cluster to deploy this app. So um, from cluster, import, uh, I think, I believe it's called AKS. Okay. And then we can create a provider for that. So um, we'll do that. Let's do this. And we can just give it the um, the cube config. Okay. That's all we have to do. And then for each of these resources, we can just make sure right now it's going to go against the ambient provider. Uh, instead, all we have to do is just make sure for each of these resources, we give it a uh, resource option uh, to um, to use the. Uh, I'm not sure why that's not showing up. Uh, to to use that provider. So I'm just going to copy and paste uh, this to each of the resources. All right, and finally, we want to be able to test the app. So in the in the example, they actually talk about I think doing something like uh, watching and, and then checking using kubectl to get the the service information. We're using Pulumi. We can actually just export the information uh, out of here and, and have that available for to us uh, at the deployment time. So I'll, I'll take this. I can just do uh, a Pulumi export. Oh, you know, yep, I have that. Okay, let me export, uh, and we'll call this, you know, the uh, endpoint. And all we need to do is give it this uh, status. That's the output of the uh, of that service, and we can run Pulumi up. 
So let's see, make sure we have this preview, see what it says it's going to do. This should uh, create the various uh, resources that are mentioned here, th these various deployments. Oh, did I miss a... I might have missed a... Oh, here, I forgot to name the provider. There we go. I uh, believe that's all we need to do. All right, so that now now we have what we want. So now we you can see we have the the various things being created, and then we're gonna have this endpoint output. So let's, oops, I'm in the wrong window. Let's go ahead and do that. Yes, you can see actually did did, did this earlier, and uh, we're you know drop that output, but we're gonna do this again uh, for real. And so now it's it's uh, this created this provider based on the cube config from the cluster that I created earlier. Uh, which was, you know, like I said, copy and paste from the examples. And then now we're deploying the actual services uh, that we co-generated from the YAML manifest. So this, this code is what cube 2 Pulumi outputted. And then we're using that code to, to deploy uh, the example. And so pretty soon at the end, we should have this uh, load balancer IP here. And, and here, sure enough, we do. And uh, we should be able to go to this endpoint and test it out. Looks like it's still coming up. Okay, so let's give that let's give that a second here. Um, while that's going, now you know the whole point of converting this into code is to actually you know not have to uh, to be to be able to maintain this more easily. So we, you can totally see like there's some pretty easy opportunities to uh, ripe opportunities for um, uh, refactoring here. So for example, like we can call, you know, we can have this thing called like backend name, right? Like this is used all over the place and we can just replace that, um, throughout our code. So we can do this, right? We can do that. Um, and then we can also do this, like this should really just be, you know, uh, the backend name. And you know that that's that's a pretty simple example of of some of the refactoring we can do. Um, you know, this like I said, this is used all over the place. Here we have this like Redis port. Uh, we can we can replace that as well. Right, we don't really expect that to change, and so we can go down. I think I saw. Uh, here we go. Right, and so over time, as you know, we can imagine like if we wanted to change these constants for whatever reason, like we could do that, and that would be part of the way that we are able to uh, maintain this application. Here's another one where we can use the uh, the backend name, right? And uh, one more time, right? So so really just cutting down a lot of this uh, boilerplate that we had from earlier, um, and. I'm not going to do too much of this. I just want to show a couple of, of these as examples, and then you know if we if we were to run Plumi up again, right? We shouldn't expect any changes because we you know we've only we've only refactored things from a code perspective, but and made it more maintainable going forward, but haven't really actually uh, changed anything uh, for real here. Except uh, looks like it thinks I made one change. Oh, I I actually made I messed up underscore to uh, this was actually. This is actually not not a straight up replacement. This was Azure vote. This was these are underscores, so I actually made a mistake. Uh, let's delete that. So we actually want to say no. Okay, let's check this again, and now we should see no diff. Okay, so. Nothing, nothing to deploy, so nothing to do there. But you know, this time, unchanged, uh, with no silly mistakes on my part. But again, like one of the nice things about Plume is you can see, you know, everything is very much desired state driven, and we can see, you know, what what's going to happen actually before 
before it happens and, and know what, what state we're going towards. So, oh, now, okay, I was just waiting for the instance to come up. It's, uh, it's come up now. And so this is, this is the, uh, you know, don't need to show too much here, but this is the example app that we had uh, earlier. And uh, at the very end, we can obviously run Pulumi Destroy and take down our whole stack uh, and, and, you know, remove all the resources uh, from, from the stack. So yeah, so really just wanted to show this really simple example, uh, but also really powerful uh, of how easy it is to uh, build an AKS cluster uh, and then deploy to it, uh, not using YAML, but using, you know, modern programming language where we can convert that YAML to a modern programming language using a tool uh, so you don't have to handwrite everything. And then you can start using that language then to do whatever refactoring you want, um, pull things in and out. You can see like, actually like, I didn't, I kind of glossed over this, but I took the code that got generated and then integrated it with existing code that I already had that was able to reference this cluster. Uh, so I didn't have to do anything, like, you know, all that orchestration happened in one program, basically. Uh, and then I was able to, you know, make the deployment, check how the state would look and, and uh, uh, able to make sure that uh, things were, were the same after I did my refactoring. So I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Uh, please make sure you follow us uh, on YouTube. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Like I said, like the video if you enjoyed watching today. Uh, leave any comments. Happy to always uh, talk to people in comments. And yeah, hope to see you next week on Modern Infrastructure Wednesday. Thanks a lot.